Hey, thanks for pressing play on this episode of the Forgotten Hockey Players of Broadway. A nostalgic look back at my favorite Rangers from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I'm your host, Tom Browning. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to the eighth episode of the Forgotten Hockey Players of Broadway. I'm your host, Tom Browning. This particular podcast is going to focus on a truly forgotten hero, a forgotten star from the New York Rangers from the 1970-71 season to the time he finished his career with the Rangers after the 74-75 season. When you think of New York Ranger goaltenders, you think of the Kerrs, the Rainers, the Davidsons, the Van Beesbrooks, Lundquist, Richters, Gump Worsley, Eddie Jockerman. But this particular New York Ranger that I'm going to focus on today was an outstanding All-Star, earning three consecutive All-Star berths, starting with the 70-71 season and ending in the 73-74 season. Three consecutive All-Star berths. Today he holds the goals against average record for all-star game appearances. There's been a lot of goalies that have played in the NHL all-star team since that time, and no one has been able what this particular hockey player was able to accomplish in NHL history. He formed, along with Eddie Jockerman, one of the top goaltending tandems in the history of the league. And that player that I'm going to focus on today is number 30, Gilles Villemur. Gilles Villemur started his Ranger career back in 1963. He was selected, signed by the New York Rangers, and actually had 13 games with the Rangers between 1963 and 1969. He played 13 games during that time as backup or coming to the big club from the minor leagues when the starting goaltenders, the backup goaltenders, were injured. Now, back in the 1960s, early 1960s, mid-1960s, before the initial expansion in the National Hockey League, there was very little rotating that went on between first and second string goalies. The first string goalie would play the vast majority of games. Back then they had a 72 game schedule. So it was not unusual for the starting goaltenders to play 60, 65 of those 72 games. And you had an extreme, extremely talented bunch of athletes who were stuck in the minor leagues back in the 60s that played in the Eastern Hockey League, the Western Hockey League, the American Hockey League. Players that today would have been good enough to play in the National Hockey League. But it wasn't until expansion came during the 1967-68 season that career minor leaguers finally got their shot, finally had the ability to shine at the National Hockey League level. And this is what happened with Gilles Villemur. He played 10 years in the minor leagues. He won everything he could at the minor league level. He earned a couple of MVPs in the American Hockey League, all-star games throughout his 10 years in the minor leagues. And again, he had 13 games with the New York Rangers between 1963 and 1969. But it was in 1970-71, post the first expansion, where NHL GMs and coaches really decided that in order to take some of the pressure off their starting goaltenders, that it made sense with all the travel now in the National Hockey League going from coast to coast, that it made sense for teams to have two goalies that they can count on. And when the Rangers brought up Gilles Villemur as, a, in essence, a 30-year-old rookie, even though he had played 13 games since 1963, this was his first time that he actually made the big club. And he was technically the backup goalie to Eddie Jockman. But Gilles Villemur and Eddie Jockman formed one of the top tandems in the National Hockey League. When you think of the top goaltending tandems, Back in that day, you had your Jerry Cheevers and Eddie Johnson with the Boston Bruins. A little bit later, you had Chico Resch and Billy Smith with the New York Islanders. You had Jacques Plant and Glenn Hall, two Hall of Famers, that wound up being selected in the expansion draft playing for the St. Louis Blues at the same time. And these you had Gump Worsley and Cesar Maniago, two former New York Rangers playing with the Minnesota North Stars, who formed a very formidable goaltending tandem. But the Rangers at that time had the best goaltending tandem in the National Hockey League. Gilles Villemur and Eddie Jockerman were so good that they actually shared the All-Star game in the 1971 All-Star game. They both made the All-Star team. They split the game and the 1973 All-Star Game. But it was in 1972 that Gilles Villemur was the goaltender for the National Hockey League East team representing the New York Rangers. How many backup goalies have made the All-Star team three years in a row? Now, when I say backup, he basically split the games in half with Eddie Jockerman. Again, this was during a, the 72-game schedule. And Gilles Villemur played over 30 games all three of those seasons. As a matter of fact, in his rookie year, 
Back in 1970-71, he played 34 games, made the All-Star team along with Eddie Jockerman. In 1972, he made the All-Star game by himself and played 37 games. And in 1972-73, he played 34 games. Goals against average of 2.30, 2.09, and 2.29 those three consecutive seasons. And they were so good that they won, they earned the Vezina Trophy as the best goaltenders in the league, giving up the fewest amount of goals during his rookie year, 1970-71, sharing the trophy along with Eddie Jockerman. They had the best, without a doubt, the best goaltending tandem for those years where the Rangers were really considered one of the league's powerhouses, as I've mentioned in earlier podcasts, only to fall short to the Boston Bruins. This was a very, this was a guy who, along with Eddie Jockerman's very athletic style, Eddie Jockerman was a superb athlete. He was a great skater, one of the best skaters on the team. And coaches and players alike often said that Eddie Jockerman was like having a sixth defenseman or a sixth skater on the ice, a third defenseman. Eddie Jockerman had a great ability to handle the puck. And Eddie Jockerman was not a flopper, but he was very athletic. He was a stand-up goalie. And back in the day, with the exception of Tony Esposito, most of your goaltenders were considered stand-up goalies. Gilles Villemure was a lefty. Eddie Jockerman was a righty. Gilles Villemure was the personification of a stand-up goalie. But he was also an excellent stick handler. And again, Emo Francis often said that he still considered basically having a third defenseman on the ice, not only when Eddie Jockman was playing, but when Gilles Villemure was playing as well. Now, Gilles Villemure was more acrobatic. He was diminutive. He was 5'8", and he had to play the angles. So he was a real cool, calm customer. He was very patient. He was outstanding at playing the angles, but he was very acrobatic when he had to be. And the Rangers never missed a beat when Gilles Villemure was in the nets when they gave Eddie Jockman a night off. I mean, there are very few goalies that were considered second fiddle that made the All-Star team once, never mind three consecutive seasons. And as, as I mentioned earlier, Today, in the year 2017, Gilles Villemure holds the National Hockey League record for the best goals against average in NHL All-Star Game history. Now, I remember Gilles Villemure coming in to playing and playing the final game, Game 6 of the 1972 Stanley Cup Finals, when the Boston Bruins won the Stanley Cup, beat the New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden in Game 6. Emil Francis, the GM, went with Gilles Villemure. He felt that the icy confidence, the cool, calm, collected Gilles Villemure would be the best guy to keep the Boston Bruins at bay in a pressure-packed situation. Remember, the Rangers had come back in Game 5 on two late goals by Bobby Russo in the third period to force a game six. And he just felt, Emo Francis felt, that Gilles Villemure would give the best opportunity for the Rangers to win. Now, Eddie Jockman was nursing some knee injuries that year. He was playing hurt, as Eddie Jockman often did. But Gilles Villemure was called upon to play in that game six at Madison, Square, at Madison Square Garden. And unfortunately for the New York Rangers, Bobby Orr took it to another level in that particular game. He scored the first goal of the game, and he also assisted on Wayne Cashman's Two goals in that particular game, and the Boston Bruins went on to win the Stanley Cup, beating the New York Rangers 3 to nothing to win the Stanley Cup in six games. But Gilles Villemure was an outstanding National Hockey League goalie. And then in this final season with the New York Rangers during the 1974-75 season, Gilles Villemure actually earned the number one spot with the New York Rangers. Eddie Jockman, through injuries and age, was in decline. And Gilles Villemure, in his final season with the New York Rangers, as a starting goalie, wound up playing 45 of the 72 games. He didn't have his greatest season during that year, unfortunately, because he was the prime goaltender for the New York Rangers that particular season. But don't forget, Gilles Villemure came to the Rangers at age 30 in 1970-71, and he was starting to wear down through injuries as well. Now, one of the quirky things about Gilles Villemure is he was one of the rare two sport athletes of his day. He was also a harness racer during the offseason. He would actually train the horses, ride the horses at Roosevelt Raceway, and he actually did a lot of that, not only during the offseason, but after he retired. And Rod Gilbert often said that Gilles Villemure's reflexes were so good because of his training during the offseason as a harness racer. And just the conditioning that one needs to be to be a harness racer really paid dividends in Gilles Villemure being a top flight goalie during the early to mid 70s with the New York Rangers. Now after the 1974-75 season, the Rangers were in 
big trouble. They were an aging team, and during the early part of the 75-76 season in October, Emil Francis was really looking to shake things up with the New York Rangers. They had lost three consecutive games by scores of 7-2, 7-1, and 9-1. And they call it today, or they called it back then, and I still remember today, is Operation Rescue. He actually put seven players on revocable waivers. He had actually threatened the team earlier that day at a players' meeting, team meeting, that unless this team started to get it together, he was going to place the whole team on waivers. The Rangers were really in tough shape. So he put Gilles Villamur, seven other players on waivers. And the bottom line was Emil Francis wound up trading Gilles Villamur to the Chicago Blackhawks for defenseman Doug Jarrett. And... At that time, Tony Esposito was still playing 70, 71 games a season. And head coach and GM Billy Ray of the Blackhawks felt that Esposito was really getting worn down by playing that many games. And he felt that Gilles Villamur, as he did with Eddie Jockman, would be the perfect complement to plug in to give Tony Esposito a rest, despite Gilles Villamur's advancing age and his own injury history. Unfortunately for Villamur, he only played a handful of games with the Chicago Blackhawks the two years he played for them. But Gilles Villamur had an outstanding National Hockey League career. He retired after the 1976-77 season with the Chicago Blackhawks. And Gilles Villamur wound up with 100 wins in his National Hockey League career with a 2.81 goals against average in his National Hockey League career with 13 shutouts. So in wrapping up this particular podcast, Gilles Villamur was an important part of the Rangers' success during the early to mid-1970s. He'll go down as a backup goalie, winning or earning three consecutive trips to the NHL All-Star team. He wasn't a backup goalie. He was a number one goalie. If he was a little bit younger when the NHL expansion draft happened in 1967-68, he would have been selected by one of those six teams that came into the National Hockey League. Another thing about Villamur as we end this podcast is he played for the Long Island Ducks, the famed Long Island minor league hockey team during the 1961-62 season. And the Ducks oftentimes are celebrated locally when sports reporters reminisce about the team that really was Long Island's team before the New York Islanders came along. The team that played at Comac Arena, where as Gilles Villamur could attest, well oftentimes the players were paid in cash. Back in those days, $165 when it came time for payday. And oftentimes where the home team was three or four hours late for a home game because their bus didn't get back in time for the start of a game after driving through a snowstorm and oftentimes where the players would lose all of their pay money during a card game before the team bus ever left the parking lot. <laughs> and Gilles Villemir was one of the more colorful characters who played for the Long, Long Island Ducks back in the early 1960s. As I mentioned before, he had a stellar minor league career for 10 years. So there you have it, Gilles Villamur, one of the top backup goaltenders in National Hockey League history, one of the best goaltenders in the history of of the New York Rangers. Number 30, Gilles Villemur. Thank you for listening. This has been a Go Tommy Boy production. 